testing is over. The season is just days away, but before then, it's time to rank the 10 teams and how they look heading into 2023. Now, this is not my definitive ranking for the rest of the season. This is just how I think things might look in the first two or three races. If the progress of Aston Martin last season has taught us anything, it's that the order can and will change very quickly with teams progressing and regressing as the season goes on. There's definitely a lot of positives for Williams to take from this test. They did the second most laps of any team, Logan Sargent got a huge amount of mileage with 229 laps, the car ran very reliably, and the team actually had the biggest gain in terms of their fastest times compared to last year of any team on the grid. Unlike in 2022, I think the team will certainly be closer to the midfield right from the off, but overall their fastest times on the soft tyres were still nothing amazing and for a team who have struggled to make a car that can do quick lap times in general over the past few years, I wanted to see them actually show that the pace was there before I could put them any further up. Alpha Tauri did the most laps of any team which was really really good for rookie Nick DeVries. Yuki on the final day did put in a very solid lap on the C4 tyres, but I still think that when it comes to Alpha Tauri, looking at how much they struggled last year and looking at how they weren't consistently fast across the three days, I still think that they're at the weaker end of the midfield. It wasn't that Alpha Tauri were bad or that their car looked horrible, it's just that whether it was long runs or quali sim laps, the car didn't blow anyone away and it remains to be seen if they have sorted the balance and aero issues that made them so inconsistent last season. McLaren feel like the biggest disappointment. The car on the track didn't look great with Oscar Piastri being the only driver to have a spin and whatever the true performance of the car actually is, the body language of Lando Norris in interviews doesn't exactly fill me with confidence. He revealed that the car still has some of those tricky traits from last year and he also admitted that the team have a lot of work to do. During the launch, Andrea Stella mentioned that they were already looking forward to a major upgrade package early on in the season and after testing, I think we can see why. Mileage and reliability was the biggest concern, especially for rookie Oscar Piastri. De Vries and Sargent did the second and third most laps of any drivers respectively. Piastri did the 18th most laps and was only ahead of his teammate Lando Norris, which in itself isn't a good thing, and also Felipe Drogovic who had to stop out on track and didn't get as many sessions as the other drivers. It must be said that Haas started the test looking very shaky with the drivers having lots of balance and lockup issues, as well as the car having some floor damage when it went over some of the curbs, but that was potentially just one of those day one kind of things because their mileage after that was pretty impressive and overall, the reliability was also very good. There's not too much to say about Haas apart from the fact that the car doesn't look like it's going to be bringing up the rear like it was in 2021, but at the same time, the lap times and body language of the car didn't make it look like they would be fighting for best of the rest, at least from the beginning of the season. Alpine definitely go into the season as the team that looked to be sandbagging the most, setting the slowest lap time out of the 10 teams, being the only team to set a lap time slower than they did during preseason testing in 2022, having the second lowest number of total laps done, and to my eye having the bounciest car on the grid, all leaves a lot of mystery around where this team really is. After last year's reliability nightmare that almost cost them 4th place in the constructors, their reliability during testing was very good. It's strange to put so much blind faith into a team that doesn't seem to be doing all that great, but there does seem to be a feeling that Alpine were running a lot more with reduced engine modes, especially during their soft tyre runs. Alfa Romeo could be the dark horses going into 2023. The general vibe from the team and drivers is that everyone is very positive. Although Valtteri had a gearbox issue which did stop him out on track, both drivers were able to get a lot of miles under their belts, especially Zhou who on day 2 did a mega long stin. On track there's an interesting balance because the car was consistently quick in the hands of both drivers, 
but I think there was definitely a compromise in setup that the team had because the Alfa Romeo along with the Alpine were the two cars that were bouncing around the most. After last season, Alfa Romeo's biggest problem wasn't building a quick car because in 2022, they arguably had the fourth quickest car in Bahrain. But it's more so, can they then develop the package across the season and maintain their momentum? Aston Martin were the buzz of the grid. On the lap count, despite Felipe Drogovic losing a little bit of time during day one, Fernando did the most laps out of any single driver across the three days. Although the times at face value at the end of day three don't jump off the screen, the car was quick across all three days, but more than anything else, the long run pace compared to the Mercedes and Ferrari, along with their tire wear, is what really got everyone excited. On track, the car just looks great. The downforce in high-speed corners looks stronger than the cars that we usually put alongside the Aston Martin, and whether or not they do live up to the hype of potentially troubling the top three teams, just being the fourth best team in the early part of the season would still be a huge success for Aston Martin. Mercedes are similar to Alpine in being one of the more difficult teams to judge because there's nothing about their test that suggests that in the early part of the season, they will be title contenders, but the fact that they were able to run the car with no porpoising seems to show that they have understood over the winter how to solve the issues that they were having last year. Although they did have a stoppage on the track with George Russell having a hydraulics issue on day two, day three was a lot more positive with Lewis Hamilton setting the second quickest lap. Lewis said it best after day three that the team isn't quite where they want to be, but it's a very good platform for them to start from. Although Mercedes might not be out and out challenging for poles and wins on pure pace in the first three or four races, they have a much more solid platform to build on with no fundamental problems. And just like Toto mentioned during the launch and what the drivers have said since, they already have early season upgrades that will hopefully see them be able to challenge for wins much sooner in 2023 than they were able to in 2022. For Ferrari, the first couple of days were about setup work. The team over the winter have tried to change a few of the characteristics that the drivers didn't like about the SF75. The team have tried to increase their straight line performance, which they seem to do, setting the fastest speed out of any team in the speed trap. Leclerc said that everything that he was feeling from the new car was all in line with what the team expected. However, you don't get something for nothing and so Leclerc also went on to say that he expected for us to be a little bit quicker in the straights, maybe struggling a little bit more in the corners. Finding that setup sweet spot is something Ferrari spent a lot of time doing and so on top of that it was also very good to see both the drivers do lots of laps with the third most overall. Reliability was a big issue for Ferrari in 2022 and it even forced them to turn their engines down in the second half of the season, so it was very good to see them have no major issues. The best teams are usually the ones you have to say the least about, and when it comes to Red Bull, they just ticked every box. Right from the very first day, Max without even breaking a sweat did the entire first day by himself, completing 157 laps. The car ran very reliably in the hands of both Max and Checo, and then to top it all off, both on long runs and then the overall fastest laps, Red Bull were always every day up at the very top. It's difficult to know what more Red Bull might be hiding, but even just ignoring the car on the track, the body language of the entire team just screams confidence. They're not talking about upgrade packages that are coming, and I think they know that certainly from the beginning of the season, they will have a car that will compete for the championship. That's my top 10 heading into the season, but let me know who you think are better or worse than I have ranked in your opinion. And if you did enjoy this video, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That would be massively appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one.